Today we're going to derive something that's like a Fourier series of my favorite function, the floor function. And I say it's like a Fourier series and not a Fourier series because technically in order to write something as a Fourier series, it needs to be a periodic function, but the floor function is not periodic. Okay, so let's see what we have. Like I said, we're going to work with the floor function. So let's recall the floor function is like an elevator down to the closest integer. So for example, the floor of three and a half will be three because we have to go down to, like I said, the closest integer. The floor of two is two because we're already at an integer and so on and so forth. And we're going to use this decomposition of the floor function as x minus something called the fractional part of x. So the fractional part is exactly what it sounds like. So you forget the whole number attached to x and you just keep the part of it that's between 0 and 1. So for example, the fractional part of 4.79 would be 0.79. The fractional part of 10 would be 0. The fractional part of 100 and a half would be 1 half and so on and so forth. And so we can graph the fractional part pretty easily just like this. So notice it'll look like a linear function starting at the x-axis and going to one unit above the x-axis, but it's periodic with period one. So here we have it between zero and one. Here we have it between one and two. So this number right here would be about one and a half. So notice one and a half would get mapped to one half because that's the fractional part. Okay, so this is also known as a sawtooth wave, and this is most definitely periodic, so we can make a Fourier series of this periodic function and then use that to find the Fourier series or something like the Fourier series of our floor function, which is our goal. Then we're going to also use the fact that if we have a function f of x, which has a period of 1, we can write it as this sum of trigonometric functions. So it's a constant, which we'll call a0, and then we have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n cosine of 2n pi x plus b sub n sine of 2n pi x. So this is really a special case of the Fourier series based off having a period of 1. So this might look a little bit different than what you might have seen before, but this works in this nice case. Okay, so now our goal will be to determine these coefficients a0, an, and bn in terms of our function f of x. So let's maybe get started with that calculation by taking the integral from 0 to 1 of our function f of x dx on both sides here. So obviously we can integrate f of x if we're given f of x. And then we can integrate this expression as a series as well. So integrating this constant, a0, which will just give us a0. And then we'll have plus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. And then the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine of 2n pi x. Maybe we'll take an a n out of this plus bn times the integral from 0 to 1 of sine 2n pi x dx. So I obviously interchanged the summation and integration, but that's okay in this case. Okay, so now we can do an easy calculation here to show that each of these integrals is equal to 0. So let's take the antiderivative of this. We'll see that it's 1 over 2n pi. And then we'll have sine 2n pi x evaluated from 0 to 1. So evaluating at 0, we get sine of 0. Evaluating at 1, we get sine of 2 pi n. But sine of 2n pi or 2 pi n is 0. So this gives us 0. And then we have something similar happening over here. This will give us minus 1 over 2 n pi, and then cosine 2 n pi x evaluated from 0 to 1. It's just in this case, the value of cosine will be 1 each time. But no matter, this also gives us 0.
So that allows us to write our coefficient a0 in terms of our function as just the integral from 0 to 1 of our function. So let's collect that here. We have a0 is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of our function. Great. Now we need to figure out what our other coefficients are. So like a more general a n and a more general b n. And we're going to use like a fairly common trick in order to do that. Okay, so now let's next fix sum m, which is a natural number, and then we'll calculate the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x times the sine of 2m pi x dx, like that. So now we'll push that through our expansion of f of x. So we'll first integrate a sub 0 times sine, but that'll just give us 0. So I'll focus on what's happening for the rest of these terms. So here we'll have this is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n. And then we have the integral from 0 to 1 of let's see, cosine 2n pi x times sine 2m pi x dx. So the cosine comes from our expansion over here. The sine comes from the fact that we're calculating this right here. And then we're going to have plus our sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of b sub n, and then the integral from 0 to 1 of sine 2n pi x sine 2m pi x and then again dx like that. Okay, and now I'll leave this to you guys just to keep this video a little bit shorter, but it's fairly easy to check that most of the time these are equal to zero. And you can do that with some angle sum formulas or sometimes they would look like um, product to some formulas for trig functions. And in fact, this guy right here is always equal to zero, whereas this guy right here is equal to zero unless m is equal to n. So in fact, as a piecewise function, this gives us zero if m is not equal to n, and it gives us a half if m is equal to n. So again, I'll let you guys check that, but that's not too hard to check. Okay, so what does that give us as a collapsing thing here? So notice that's gonna pick out our b sub m term, and we'll have a half b sub m equals this. In other words, b sub m equals two times this guy right here. We'll have the integral from zero to one of f of x times sine of 2m pi x dx. Great. And now we've got a nice expression for a0 and then an arbitrary b coefficient. And then you get something really similar for an arbitrary a coefficient, which we'll just write at the top of the next board before applying it to our problem. So after re-indexing what we had on the last board, we have the following formulas for our coefficients in our expansion. Now we're ready to apply these to our function, our fractional part function. So notice these integrals are occurring between 0 and 1. So maybe the most important observation to start with is that on the interval 0 to 1, not including 1, we have the fractional part of x is just equal to x, which is evident just by restricting this between 0 and 1. Okay. So that means we can use this to calculate these numbers pretty easily. So notice that a0 will be the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx, which just gives us 1 half. So immediately we have our constant term a0. Now we need to look for our terms a n and b n. You might be a little bit worried because this is the integral from 0 to 1. It seems like it should include 1. But 1 is a single point from this interval, so it doesn't really contribute anything. Okay, so now let's, like I said, calculate a n and b n. So we've got a n 
is equal to, let's see, two times the integral from zero to one of x times cosine of two n pi x dx. And since we've got a polynomial times a transcendental function, we probably want to use integration by parts. And so we'll choose this to be our u and the rest to be our v. We always want to choose u so that when we take its derivative, it becomes simpler. So let's see, that means our du will just be dx, and that means our v will be the antiderivative of this, which will be 1 over 2 in pi sine 2 in pi x. Great. Now let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with 2 u times v, so that'll be x times sine 2 in pi x all over 2 in pi. We need to evaluate that between 0 and 1. Notice both of those evaluations will give us 0 because we'll have sine of an integer multiple of pi. So this whole thing just gives us zero. And then from there, we'll have minus two from this two right here of v du. So that'll be two over two n pi. So I'll just write this as one over n times pi. And then the integral from zero to one of sine two n pi x dx. Okay, so nice. But that thing is also going to give us zero for a similar calculation to as we saw before. Great. So that means our a n coefficient is just zero in each case. Now let's calculate our b n coefficient. So here we have b n is two times the integral from zero to one of x times sine two n pi x dx. So again, we need to use integration by parts. Now we'll have this, x is our u, and this sine term will be our dv. So making the calculation over here, we see du is again dx, but now v is minus one over two n pi times cosine two n pi x, just by taking the antiderivative. So let's see, that'll give us our first term, which is, u times v evaluated between zero and one, that'll give us zero for a similar reason to this right here. Okay, so we'll have our first term, which is u times v. So that'll give us something like minus x times cosine of two n pi x divided by n times pi because the twos cancel. And then we need to evaluate this between zero and one. And then we'll have another term, which is essentially just the integral of cosine, but that will give us zero for the same sort of reason that this one gave us zero. So that's all we're left with here. Now, evaluating this at zero will give us zero because of this x. Evaluating this at one will give us cosine of two n pi, which is one. So in the end, we'll get minus one over n times pi. So putting this all together, we see that a sub n is always equal to zero, whereas our b sub n is equal to this minus n times pi. So let's take that fact along with the a sub zero to start putting it together. So for our fractional part function, we determine the coefficients in the Fourier expansion were these values right here. So a naught was a half, all other values of a sub n was zero, and then b sub n was minus one over n times pi. Now we're ready to put this together. So this tells us that the fractional part function of x is in fact equal to one half, and then minus one over pi times the sum as n goes from one to infinity, of one over n. So I took this pi out and this minus sign out and the bn is attached to the sine function. So we have sine of two n pi x. Great. But now putting this together with our expression of the four function in terms of this fractional part function gives us a nice Fourier series for our floor function. So in the end, we have our floor function is equal to x minus half 
plus 1 over pi times the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, and then sine of 2n pi x. Great. And that's a nice final way to rewrite our four function in terms of a sine series. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.